This is Brother Peter Diamond, VaticanCatholic.com. This is part two of the video, Bishop Richard Williamson, A Theological Mess. In part one, I discussed how Bishop Williamson unfortunately denies the dogma outside the church there is no salvation. He believes that the clear dogmatic pronouncements must be explained away by, quote, understanding them, and that understanding leaves him with a conclusion that there is salvation for people who are not Catholic, and in fact in any religion, as their books say. We also discussed the totally illogical and unfortunately obstinately schismatic position of the Society of St. Pius X vis-a-vis -vis Benedict XVI and his, quote, hierarchy, in other words, the Vatican II sect, and how they regard them as the legitimate occupants of Catholic seats of authority, while at the same time obstinately operating independent of them, and denouncing people who correctly and logically point out that they have no authority, such as the set of contests. I also covered how Bishop Williamson amazingly said that John Paul II was a, quote, good man in an interview a few years back, despite knowing about many of John Paul II's scandalous, heretical, outrageous, and blasphemous statements and actions. Now, returning to that point, he not only said that John Paul II was a, quote, good man, he said that he believes Ratzinger, Benedict XVI, who, like John Paul II, has engaged in innumerable acts of heresy and statements that are contrary to defined Catholic truth, he believes he's in good faith, too. At the same time, in this interview, he admits that Rahner and Ratzinger were engaged in, quote, an absolute revolution. Quoting from this interview in the article on our website, he points out how their goal was to reorient things toward man and bring in a new religion, and that they wanted to, quote, rewrite, to empty out all the bottles, all the dogmas of their old content and refill the dogmas with brand new content that will be acceptable to modern man. And that new content is coherently a system that starts with man, centers on man, and finishes with man. And he goes on, that is briefly the new religion. He says, is Cardinal Ratzinger conscious of all this? I believe he's in good faith. End quote. So he admits they're engaging in a revolution to empty the dogmas of their traditional content. A revolution against Christ, against the gospel. But you can do all that and even lead the charge of it and be in good faith. This is satanic. If Benedict XVI and John Paul II were in good faith, then that means that there can be universal salvation. Because if people who are extremely familiar with Catholic teaching and even rose to, quote, high-ranking positions of authority in what people think is the Catholic Church, if they can then, quote, carry on an absolute revolution against the traditional dogmas and empty them of their content, and they can be in good faith, and therefore if they're in good faith they can be saved, then anybody could be in good faith because that is as culpable as one can be. If you are thoroughly educated in the true faith, and then you attack the dogmas, and you do so by leading millions of others into the same denial of those dogmas, there is no one who is more culpable. In other words, there's no excuse for those individuals, and so if they can be saved, then anybody can be saved. And that's why these individuals, even though they deny it, it's true, they believe in universal salvation. That's the logical result of their heretical denial of the necessity of adhering to Catholic truth to be in a good state, the state of grace, and be saved. And so again, I want to emphasize how dark this is. Beneath the cassocks and the chanting and the Latin, this is dark. This is a denial of Christ. This is empty. It's a charade. I also want to talk about how Williamson, in confronting the many contradictions that arise in adhering to his false position on the Vatican II Church, he, of course, comes up against the problem of canonizations. Canonizations are traditionally held to be infallible because they pertain to the infallibility of the Church and the infallibility of universal laws of the Church, and, and so canonizations, for those and other reasons, are infallible. But in addressing this in a letter of 
December 6, 2002, which is quoted in this article, he says, quote, Indeed, before Vatican II, Catholic theologians agreed that canonizations, not beatifications of saints, were virtually infallible. But since Vatican II, there has followed such a flood of canonizations under John Paul II that the whole process of canonizing has lost, together with its solemnity, any likelihood of infallibility. Indeed, how can John Paul II intend to do anything infallible, or therefore do it, when he so often acts and talks, for instance, about living tradition, as though truth can change. End quote. This is totally illogical and heretical. He simply denies that canonizations are infallible anymore. Now, that's not logical. If you have a valid pope before Vatican II, and canonizations are infallible, as he says, and then they claim that John Paul II was a valid pope after Vatican II, the logical conclusion is that canonizations are still infallible if you regard him as the Pope, unless you can show a clear defect in the way that the canonizations are being done, not in the number of the, quote, canonizations that are being declared. He doesn't even attempt to do that because he can't. For John Paul II uses the same solemn formula that they used before Vatican II, and so he simply denies that they're infallible anymore on the basis that there's been, quote, such a flood of canonizations. That is ridiculous. Any logical person can see that that means that the church is no longer infallible, that something has changed here. And so a logical person would conclude that the defect is with the man attempting to do the canonization, John Paul II, because he's not a pope. He also says something that's heretical. He says that how can John Paul II intend to do anything infallible and therefore do it when he so often talks and acts about living tradition? In other words, because he doesn't really believe in the concept of tradition that is handed down, he therefore cannot do anything that is infallible. That is heretical and absurd. It means that a pope can pronounce something in a manner that is infallible, and it will not be infallible because of what's going on in his mind. That is simply a denial of the protection that Christ gave to popes when they utilize the fullness of the teaching power. It is a denial of Vatican I. It is completely heretical nonsense because it takes the unchanging principle out of the office itself and subjects it to the mind of a man. No, the principles are unchanging. A true pope, when he exercises his authority in certain ways, is infallible, period. If you have a man who purports to be a pope and is making clear errors in, quote, canonizations, then you don't have a pope. You can't conclude that he is a pope, but the act might not be infallible because he could have strange ideas in his head. That is to subject unchanging, infallible Catholic principles to the various views of different men. Now, it doesn't matter what a pope is thinking. If he is, in fact, a pope, he is infallible when he does certain things. But the problem here is that John Paul II was not a pope, and that's why, in defending that false position, they fall into all kinds of other heresies, illogical arguments, and modernistic ideas. The next outrageous statement I want to talk about comes in the same interview I referenced earlier. Shortly after Benedict XVI's, quote, election, Williamson was asked about it, and he said, quote, To tell you the honest truth, I don't expect a great deal from Rome as it stands. They are too far gone in the, quote, new religion, and the new religion is too radically different and distant from the true religion. Rome is Rome, though, and I do believe there the popes are. And there are the cardinals, and that is where the official structure of the church is to be found. End quote. As I said in my article a while back, this is theological puke. It's completely ridiculous. Williamson says that the Vatican II religion is a new religion. That means that it's not the Catholic religion. Yet, he says that these men who lead this religion, and therefore are leaders of a false non-Catholic new religion, they are the representatives of the Catholic Church, the legitimate hierarchy of the Catholic Church. That means that the Catholic Church and the Catholic religion 
has been equated with a new false religion. It's very simple. If they're part of a new religion, that means they don't have the Catholic faith. And it's a dogma that if you don't have the faith, you're outside the church. You cannot be in the same communion. You cannot be in the same body with those who do not share the same faith. And yet this man constantly insults others, talks about how, quote, Phenite and Sedevacantist minds shut down as if they're not thinking correctly when he's guilty of outrageous statement after modernist heresy after completely illogical absurdity. This is pseudo-intellectual pride and spiritual blindness in action to an outrageously high degree. Despite Williamson's pretension to sound thinking, traditional principles, and theological expertise, we can see that the reality is just the opposite.